During the early days of the 20th century, a civilian transport train was converted into an unstoppable war machine that ruled the rails of Eastern Europe and Asia. Among the many armored trains produced during this era, none became as famous and feared as the Zamburets. Assembled in the last days of World War I by the decadent Tsarist army, this armored train had no loyalties. The Zamburets were equipped with two fully traversable 57mm turrets, a dozen machine guns, and layers of thick armor. The weaponized vehicle became highly sought by the White and Red Russians of the Bolshevik Revolution, but it eventually also fell under the hands of the Czechoslovak Legion, the Chinese, and the Japanese. They all wanted to own the most devastating land-based superweapon of the time. Armored Trains An armored train is a civilian railway train equipped and protected with layers of inches thick armor and an array of military grade equipment. This may include machine guns, artillery pieces, and an arsenal to equip its crew. Armored trains were primarily used during the late 19th and early 20th centuries when rails and trains were considered the latest technological innovations of the time. These giant steel plated locomotives paved the way for great scale city sieges, massive infantry assaults, and deep infiltration tactics for hit and run attacks. It's accepted that armored trains were first used during the American Civil War of 1861 to 1865 thanks to Ivan Turchaninov, a Russian army officer that served in the Union Army when the conflict began. And during the siege of Pittsburgh in 1864, Union Army Brigadier General John Turchin armed trains with 13-inch mortars to defend the garrison from the enemy. Armored trains also saw action during the 1870 Franco-Prussian War that culminated with the victory of the Prussian forces united by Bismarck. Enhanced trains were then used by the British Army at the Boer Wars of 1899-1902 to counter the guerrilla tactics of the Boers. As World War I approached, armored trains in the Far East were employed again by the Russian Army against the Japanese to make the most out of the harsh winters during the Russo-Japanese War of 1905. The seasoned armored trains would be perfected in 1914 to make them bigger and more lethal for a new era of warfare. But it would be the Russians that would eventually create the colossus of armored trains, the Zamurats. The Zamurats. When World War I broke out, most European armies had a handful of armored trains. Although trains had mostly been used to quickly carry troops and equipment from one battlefield to another, the military realized that they would make a good weapon for military operations. Even though trains were tied to tracks, it was not considered a disadvantage, as tanks had not yet appeared, and armies relied heavily on horses and bicycles for mobility. Fitted with thick layers of steel-plated armor, artillery, and machine guns, armored trains began to be used in significant numbers in the Eastern Front, where covering considerable distances in a short amount of time was crucial to gain the upper edge against the enemy. The Eastern Front was more mobile than the Western Front, and Russia sought to move troops and supplies as fast as possible to prevent the Germans and Austro-Hungarians from covering more ground. From 1915 onwards, the Russian army began employing trains as artillery platforms, and by 1917, seven of them were in service. One of them was Zamuretz. The development of the armored train began in 1916 on the Odessa rail yards and underwent several modifications and redesigns before it reached its final form. Zamuretz was protected by steel-plated armor between 12 and 16 millimeters thick, depending on the area covered. It was powered by two Italian-made 60-horsepower petrol motors that gave it a maximum speed of up to 45 kilometers per hour, and its total weight was estimated at 130 tons. The train's main armament consisted of two turrets that could flawlessly rotate 360 degrees with the help of electric motors. Up to 12 machine guns of different calibers could be fitted in the train car, while both sides had portholes for small arms and more infantry machine guns. 57mm Nordenfeldt guns and 76.2mm Putilovs had an elevation of 10 degrees up and 60 degrees down, and its armament would vary as Zamuretz was captured by different armies. The Russian Revolution The Russian army briefly used the imposing train during the fight against the Germans and Austro-Hungarians in the Galatian Front of 1917 before the country withdrew. Famine and social disturbances quickly destabilized Russia after Lenin and other Bolsheviks proclaimed a revolution. Tsarism was at the brink of extinction, and the empire was forced to sign the Treaty of Brest-Litovak. The Russian Revolution of 1917 had begun, 
and there was no turning back. Bolshevik Reds, Tsarist Whites, and external powers began fighting each other to control the vast Russian Empire. And the most wanted weapons were the armored trains, especially the Zamurets. As the war between the White Tsarists and the Red Bolsheviks escalated, each faction began improvising their own armored trains. From the original seven armored trains that Russia had at its disposal, some 300 were built from standard trains to achieve the ultimate victory. But none of them dared to defy Zamurets, also known by the Reds as Lenin in honor of the man who instigated the uprising once they captured it from the Whites in early January of 1918. Zamurets then saw action in the Odessa Bolshevik uprising, joining the Black Sea Fleet and Red Guards against Ukrainian insurgents in March of 1918. During the onslaught, Zamuretz was damaged by German artillery and returned to Russia for repairs, but the legendary tank fell into the hands of the Czechoslovak Legion. A Legion 40,000 strong. After the Tsar's cruel demise at the hands of the Bolsheviks, the fearsome 40,000 legionaries were left without a cause after their country was finally liberated with the dissolution of the Austro-Hungarian Empire. On their 6,000-mile journey to Vladivostok after Leon Trotsky ordered the legion to be disarmed and dissolved, they took over the Trans-Siberian Railway. The veterans decided that they would fight their way into Vladivostok, and Zamuretz, now renamed Orlik or Young Eagle, would be their warhorse. For over a year, the Legion, with the support of the Whites, ruled the rails of Russia with an army of trains that supported a refitted Zemuretz. As 1920 approached, the Bolshevik government offered the Legion a truce. If they gave up the rails and the trains, the Czechoslovakians would get safe passage to their land. They agreed and were left with a convoy that would carry the men and supplies back to their homes. Zemuretz covered the rear guard. On the way to Vladivostok, the Legion was stopped by the Japanese at Hylar, Mongolia. There was an altercation in which the Legion did not participate, but the Japanese ordered them to surrender Zamuretz. The Japanese then let the Legion go and sail to their country in September of 1920. Zamuretz would eventually be retaken by the Whites to fight the Reds until 1922, when they decided to evacuate to Manchuria. The Whites then turned into mercenaries to help warlord Zhang Zhulin in his fight against the Japanese-backed Zili army. From 1924 onwards, Zamuretz was operated by Chinese crews to take down other warlords supplied by the Japanese, but the Chinese fight for freedom was useless. Even Zamuretz could not prevent the Japanese ambitions of taking over the country. In 1931, train number 105, as the Chinese named Zamuretz, was taken by the Japanese when they invaded Manchuria and China. Nobody ever heard from Zamuretz again after this, and no trail was ever found. Thank you for watching our video. Please like and subscribe to our Dark Documentaries channels to watch more historical content. And tell us in the comments below what you think of armored trains and their use.